in what we call the standards-based report card. As I'm sure most of you have heard of the last number of years, the state of New York has shifted to a common core standards curriculum, and Yeshiva Artura three years ago began aligning itself with that curriculum. Over the last year and a half, a team of our faculty led by Mrs. Simon and the administrative team working alongside developed a standard-based report card that is unique to Yeshiva Hartora but incorporates our curriculum and integrates the Common Core standards as well. Nothing you should be reading on here now because uh, we'll get to it. The purpose of a standard-based report, report card is to help you better understand your child's progress in terms of specific skills that are measurable for which teachers should have data and not just like, you know, a thought of how a child might be doing in a particular area, but everything should be, should, should be able to be substantiated by data and there are assessments being done consistently to update that data. And hopefully the, the new report card as it, uh, as it is rolled out this trimester will give you more information and a better understanding of the information that you have. So I'm going to turn over to Ms. Klepenik, who's going to start the presentation. Thank her as well as Ms. Hollander for cooperating on the presentation. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi. We're all a little late, so um, So Rabbi um, basically kicked off the idea of the standards-based report card. Um, when we say standards, just to back up a moment, the standards that we're referring to are the Common Core State New York State standards. Um, we have integrated them into the curriculum. This is Simon spearheaded um, a process that took about a year and a half, uh, where we wrote our curriculum um, in order to cover the standards, and then now we wrote a report card to align to the standards so that we can assess and track each student as we go. Um, these, these standards were piloted last year. Teams of teachers worked together um, to determine which semester of which grade each of the skills should be placed in, and um, I'll get to in one second, but it make all sense, makes sense in one second. Um, there's no way to focus on No, there's me, that's fine. Um, each, of this, each of these um, standards were put into a chart that we call a rubric. Um, and every student has a chart in reading, writing, and in math. Um, we have one up on the board right here. And what we did was we took the standards that students are expected to meet at grade level and they are put into this column, this third column here, column here, Mastering Standards, and we've identified, like I said, which point during which school um, each year a student needs to master. The teacher um, uses this to track every single child. I know Mrs. Hollander is going to talk about that more extensively. Um, the way that we determine if children are meeting the standards is based on data that we collect, and you're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, we expect, our expectation for most students is that they should be mastering grade level standards. Um, there are students in some in some areas um, that might be approaching the standards, which means they're close to mastery, and there might be students that in some areas or a few areas are below standards. Very few students um, should be expected to be exceeding grade level standards. That means the child is above grade level. Um, we expect that to be very few children every year. Uh, do you want to go through the rubric? Okay. So as Ms. Kopanek was saying, um, Teachers receive a rubric for each and every child in their class, one for reading, one for writing, and one for math. Social studies, a lot of the common core standards fit into reading and writing, so we didn't create one just for social studies. This is an example of what a child's rubric will look like for writing. When we talk about writing, it's not just, oh, what does the teacher feel about how this child is doing? The teacher has data, as Ms. Klotanik mentioned. They are writing assessments, and not just the final copy, but the whole process of writing is collected and is analyzed. If you look, one of the um, subtopics on the report card underneath writing will be generates ideas. So what is generates ideas? It means that if you're mastering the standard, that means that you are on grade level for mastering the standard, you can generate ideas with guidance and support from adults for writing. Specifically, this is a third grade. Specifically in third grade, they're working on persuasive essays, stating an opinion supported by a list of reasons with concluding statement. 
If a teacher can see this standard clearly in their in your child's writing, the teacher would actually highlight this box. On your report card, when you see the generates ideas, the, the grade or the, the assessment of what you're going to see next to it is mastering the standard. You're not going to see a one, two, three, four. You're going to see mastering standard. That was pretty clear because there's only one bullet point in the box. But let's say if you look at communicates ideas. Communicates ideas, you see that the child, based upon collection of data, is communicating the ideas with writing with guidance and support from adults, responds to questions and suggestions when conferring with adults or peers, communicates ideas through limited word choice, and then they're all on mastering the standard. But the standard of inconsistently revises writing as needed for clearer communication using linking words and phrases that the child is approaching standard. So the question that a teacher asks is, well, where does the child fall? Where do you think the child falls? Mastering. Excellent. Mastering. The child is overall mastering the standard. However, in your anecdotals by your teacher, in the comments written by your teacher, by your child's teacher, it will talk about the, the growth that they're looking for in this area. It will be mentioned because that's the next step for your child. How you, the teacher is going to help your child have all of these highlighted by the next report card. Um, if you can just scroll down. <laughs> Another category on the writing would be demonstrates writing, writing stamina. And on the Common Core, there is a stamina that you need to be able to keep every certain page. Here, the child can only write for a consistent amount of time for 15 minutes, and that's approaching standard. That's also pretty clear. Down here to organizing ideas. So if you look again, we have some that are highlighted in the mastering of standards, and we have some that are highlighted in the approaching standards. And there are more, if you just scroll down, Ms. Lieutenant, it continues on the other page. <coughs> so the question is, where does that child fall? So in this case, because of what was highlighted, as in, I'm sorry, if you just scroll, let me scroll. oh, there it goes. So in this case, the child can introduce a topic, the child can state an opinion, but the child is still working on creating an organizational structure that lists reasons with direct guidance, and they're working on supplies, applies re uh, reasons to support opinion. They're working on that. Because it's, an, uh, it's a persuasive essay, and that's the, the meat of the essay, in this case, the child would be approaching. And again, in the comments, the teachers will explain to you why. What are we working on with your child to attain success, to attain the next level? So even in this case, when there is some on one and some on the other, this is a pre-learned skill that repeats year after year after year, so they've gotten that. But the new skill, that's what they're working on, and therefore they would be in approaching. What's amazing about using the rubric and teachers using the rubric is that there's data. It's not just, hmm, it's nice, I know. They literally take the writing assessment, they literally take the writing process, the generating ideas, the expanding of thoughts. They take all that information, and for every single one of your children, they create a highlighted rubric like this. And that's how your grades on the, what you see on the report card, that's how they are developed. I just want to know, this is going to be the first term report card, so they have, let's say, the expectations. Will the expectations look the same or different with each marking period? No. And in fact, on your first semester report card, you'll see for some areas it'll say NA because that topic hasn't been covered yet. Um, but all the, all the topics will be listed, all the standards that need to be met, and they might not even be addressed in the first semester, or they might be addressed 
we might expect grade level to be at one point uh, for the student, while second or third semester, we might expect them to be more proficient in that area. So the rubric, might the rubric the changes. Rubric There's change. one for each semester, for each child, for each subject. It's an extensive project. Do the, co the teacher's comments support the highlighted yes. area? And in further detail, to give us more in insight with in as to how to help that child at home, or Absolutely. just to understand better? Both. One, what they're doing in class, mm -hmm. and the other, what could you do at home to help the process along? That's Absolutely. Right. And these rubrics will be part of your conversation at uh, you know and within conferences. Parents, uh, teachers will have these to generate um, learning goals for every child. So, uh, Mrs. Hollander, um, it pointed out a student who was mainly meeting expectations, but that child still has a learning goal for next semester, even if they've mastered most of the grade level standards, and their learning plan will be centered around where they might be approaching. So every single child has areas that they're going to improve on specifically. So this is a sample uh, report card of one specific child. This is not the report sorry, card. This is, this is the rubrics card. that supports the report card. We're going to try to get a copy of the report card up in just a moment. So this, so this is the, so for every, for every title that was underlined on the rubric, that is a section on the report card. And it, these are the skills that are the basis for a grade on the report card. So, so the teachers usually use these rubrics. Um, they're for tracking each student, and the parents receive a report card based on the data and the rubrics. So if you're saying, what you're saying is all the words. Right, that's a lot to send home. All the words, <laughs> every single student. Right. Every single on, student. On it's, it's a no, hefty no, no, package. No, they're not, gonna they're not going to go home. They're, they're, they're oh, for us to use teacher. professionally, um, but the teacher needs to track the student. Okay. So what do the parent? how much words the parents see We're going to pull up a report card. Uh, the report card is, um, well, it was the underlined subheadings. So on, there was a heading and then many things breaking down. Right. So you would get the heading uh, with a mastering, approaching, right. slow, or speaking. Um, I, I'm just wondering what would make a kid exceptional? Uh, you said like very few kids are going to get that, and I'm not saying my son is. I'm just saying <laughs> what would make him exceptional. So we have to we have to imagine what that looks like even in this room. It means that there's a child who is performing above grade level, which means their essays are written above grade level. Mm -hmm. um, their math, their computing above grade level. There are very few students who do that above grade lo level, mm -hmm. and it's probably not a goal for most students. Um, honestly, it's it's. You know, that's where they place. And um, most students, um, if they're mastering grade level standards, we should celebrate that with them. They have mastery of what we expect of them. And also, this is also the Judaica studies, too, not just. Not, not Judaic yet. studies is not, at this point, was not redone for this year. This oh, project okay. was one through five general studies. That's all we're rolling out now. We hope over time to be developing the Jewish studies as well and the junior high. This was first an initial project for first and fifth grade. Yes. Okay. Good question. The um, the Common Core standards are the you know the main headings, and we break down what the child needs to do in order to achieve those. So they provide. This format exactly, or no, not the you format. put it together from everything that they. We we had, we wrote a curriculum around the standards, and then we listed the standards on these rubrics, broke them down, and put those standards on a report card. And the standards you see are being met. Um, those are from the Common Core State standards. So this particular format is customized to the school. It's not like this is our own any format. Role model or I mean, Mrs. Simon did extensive research in the area, um, and we came up with something that works for our Torah and is based on. Best practices. Yes. So, were a child to get uh, approaching expectations, for example, we would be able to work with the teacher to know exactly where the work is what necessary, right? What specific skill areas, skill areas are deficient in, right? Right. So that would be the that would be like that the, would be the next step. The next in terms step. Of work. Okay. And it's that's something right. that's uh, the skills are, and you know, as Mrs. Hollander was reading them, there's something that's measurable, and we can observe a child can I can either master them or, or right. not master. Them. And we as parents could observe, well, and you and you as parents can look for that. Yes. Okay. But, but it won't be written. See, I'm still waiting for this sample. Oh, the standard. It, the, she, cause she, uh, she just said we could work with the teacher, but it won't be written on the report card. You have to actually speak with the teacher. So the standard will be on the report card, but the teacher can explain to you, like Mrs. Hollander showed, that one child, 
the area that was not mastering, that, that was an area that the teacher will create a plan and communicate with the parent, this needs to be worked on, right. this they particular should. area. And then they then that area, if they master that, we'll move them over to mastering grade level standards in that whole writing section. There should be a reference in the anecdotals, in the comments section, that helps you understand the child is not reaching the standards. However, in terms of the total plan of what to do, that obviously is not going to be in the report. Right. But if a that child will be in a conversation. And if a child's mastering, except for one area, that area will be highlighted in comment. Yes. So the rubrics, the rubrics are really a lot of information, honestly. They're, they're more of a professional document for a teacher. A teacher can show you your child's rubric. Um, they're like a hefty portfolio sort of package that a teacher uses. Um, and they, right. Yeah, for each individual child in the they, they map, it works with our curriculum. Um, it's not exactly the type of document that we need to communicate with parents. But you are welcome to look at your child. Other questions? Okay. Should I move it? Yeah, I can't get it out. Because the teacher where you start to enter grades. And it looks different when you print it out than that. Okay. It's on the two pages. Um, so we'll have to print the hard copy. And, um, and I'll just wait we'll out have the copies. Answer. We'll have copies, hard copies, of the sample report card <laughs> in the lobby. So that by the time you leave today, hopefully you'll be able to pick up a copy if you'd like to see it. Okay. We have a green sheet that we prepare to frequently ask questions about standards-based report card, um, especially tailored to Yeshiva Hart Torah. They're green. You can take one on your way out. Yes. 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 Intentionally. Intentionally. The, uh, the plan here is that the first conference is not about report card. It's about the child. So not to focus specifically yes. on why did my child get this as opposed to this. You get a chance to do that the next next parent teacher conference. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go open up a, a dialogue. We'll bring that. Oh, we're not taking a report card. No, I'm not. No, they're gonna have to. Not the map. Not the map.